This is Bard attitude. <laughs> there used to be bards in Wales. They used to pass on stories and Welsh mythologies from one person to the other. You do have bards these days as well. It's just that they wear black denim and black chinos. Before bards, you had druids. And what post-punk was for punk, bards were for druids. <laughs> they did more interviews. I can't rhyme on anything, but I'll just tell you some things. I struggle in Argos as the biros are too small for my enormous hands. <laughs> My signature often looks faint. So you could say that chip and pin has been a blessing to me. <laughs> I don't like it when one person tries to sound like a whole crowd of people in a football match. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that. There's more people shouting at you. I work with some guys as a porter in the civil service, but I can't tell you which one because I signed the official secret act. <laughs> we were given a computer. As our boss said, something for you fuck is to piss a bear on. <laughs> we don't want you fuckers on the network. The head porter was on it most of the time playing card games. Solid person. He used to say double dick instead of double click. <laughs> I told him it was double click, not double dick, but he still said double dick. <laughs> Christmas was getting close and people were asking each other what they were getting for the little and for Christmas. Laptop, laptop, laptop. One guy said, here, bed me. You know those games on the computer in the office? Stick them on a disc and I'll take them home from a new door on a new laptop. <laughs> <laughs> the porters used to get dressed in the room. Work started at 6.30 sharp. So I would often be tired getting in. And dream time and real time blended together. I'd been having reoccurring dreams that the other porters had gills on their butt cheeks, like fish. <laughs> One morning, I could have sworn that the head porter did have gills on his butt cheeks as he took off his tracksuit bottoms. <laughs> One of the guys working with me showed me how I could get two sausages for the price of one in the staff canteen by squashing the first one so far into the bun that the woman at the tail could only see one sausage. Push the first one right in, put the second one on top. And when they look at it, she thinks you've only got one. And then he said, fuck me. <laughs> I was in a pub in Brixton two and a half years ago. And I heard some middle-aged guys doing impressions of different musical instruments. I think they'd been inspired by the wooden minstrels that were stacked above the bar. They were all rubbish, especially the electric guitar guy. But one small man who looked like George from George and Mildred did an amazing clarinet impression. But really good, like it sounded like it was a clarinet. But they didn't give him the credit he was due. <laughs> and because they weren't my friends, I didn't want to interfere. <laughs> my brother had a friend called Ivor, who claimed that he had never cried. He lived on a farm nearby and he had an expensive miniature motorbike. He was like a woodland version of James Dean. <laughs> I decided to put his no crying claim to the test and set a trip wire made out of fishing gut to trip him up. <laughs> <laughs> and he did cry.